Good morning. How is everybody today? I gave you guys like zero notice <laughs> hopping onto this live, um, but I'm gonna be on vacation the next few days, so I may not be able to chat with you guys quite as much. Um, and there was definitely a topic that I felt like Jesus was bringing up today. Um, and I wanna talk to you guys about one of the things that could be hindering you from stepping into a place, into a season of breakthrough. Amen. And so that's what we're topping, talking about today. And it's going to have a lot to do with our mindset. So good morning to you guys as you're hopping on. Again, I gave you guys zero notice on this. <laughs> um, but I wanted to hop on and do a really quick live with you guys and kind of to chat through some stuff. So say hey. Um, tell me where you're from. I'm kind of getting my life situated here <laughs> while you guys are hopping on. Happy Saturday. I am so excited. The weather here is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so I plan on going outside some today and just enjoying the really pretty weather. Um, I hope it's nice where you guys are at. But man, I'm in the south and it got hot really, really fast down here. <laughs> um, so it's like the AC is going full blast today. <laughs> it's one of those. Um, so I want to talk to you guys a lot about our mindset today. And so I think that one of the things that can happen is the devil can hinder us so much in this area and it can prevent us from stepping into the place of our destiny or of the breakthroughs or in the places that God has for us. Hey, Charlie, it's good to see you. Good morning. You're from Delaware. I have good buddies in Delaware. That's awesome. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what we're going to chat through today and kind of our, um, hi, is it Pastor Sandy? Good to see you. Um, so many awesome people hopping on. This is great. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to start off with is kind of like an anchor phrase that I want us to keep in mind throughout this entire live today. Okay. And that phrase is this, you will never grow past your mindset. You will never grow past your mindset. And how many of you guys know that one of the primary ways that the devil attacks us is in our mind? Amen. And so we have to really, really learn to be careful to not only guard our mind, but to renew our mind on a regular basis. And this is absolutely critical to your walk of God with a Christian. And I think that God, you know, God has been just blowing my mind with this recently and showing me just how critical this really is. You know, I don't even, I think that if we could study this topic for years and not even hit the surface level of how important this is in our personal lives. And your mind controls so much of how your life goes, ladies and gents, which is why the Bible constantly talks to us about the importance of making sure that our mind is renewed. Amen. And so we're going to be talking about this today. And I want you guys to, again, remember that phrase, you will never grow past your mindset. This is really, really important, ladies and gents. And so if your mind is sick, you're going to be sick, quote unquote. And it may not always look like a physical infirmity, but it could look like areas of lack in your life. It could look like areas of deception so that it's preventing you from stepping into a place of breakthrough in your personal life. It could look like all this different types of stuff ladies and gents, which is why it's so important that we talk about this. You know, the word of God tells us that scripture is what helps to renew our minds. And it's not just kind of a suggestion in the Bible. It's a command, right? Scripture tells us, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And so it's so important for us to renew our mind because if we don't renew our minds on a regular basis, what can happen is when we spend more time in the world than we spend time focusing on what God's word has to say about our circumstances, our situations, who we are, who others are, amen, it can cause all kinds of damage in our lives because if we can begin to foster a place of unbelief and we can begin to align ourselves more with the devil's report than what God's report is over our situations. And this can cause major, major problems for us in our personal life. Amen. So it's really, really critical that we watch this stuff and that we are in this place of renewing our minds. And so um, what I wanted to do first is I've got a ton of scripture I want to dive into today. Um, but I also wanted to kind of throw out a really cool resource. Um, so this is a book that I am probably three-fourths of the way through at this point. Um, I have not finished it, but it's a really, really good book, and I would highly recommend it. What's interesting is it's actually not a Christian book. I don't read a lot of books that aren't Christian these days, um, but it's nonfiction, and it's actually really good. And this book um, was actually gifted to me by my aunt over Christmas. It was a really good Christmas present, and it's called Atomic Habits. 
Um, and if you guys have not read this book, it's a really, really good book. It's by James Clear. Um, I like to throw out kind of resources for you guys occasionally. Um, and what's cool is it talks about the importance of our habits, amen, and how they make up so much of our lives and even our unconscious decisions. Amen. And so it's a really, really good book. And while it, again, it's not a Christian book, it talks about a lot of principles that we see in the Bible. Amen. And one of the things that I wanted to address today that's not in this book, but this book got me thinking about it a lot, is the fact that you can have habits that are either good or bad in your mind. Amen. Have you guys ever thought about that before? Some of us have bad habits of not capturing wrong thoughts and replacing them with the right, the right thoughts. Amen. And in a way, it's kind of a form of laziness, right? You know, guilty as charged. I've done this before too, right? You know, um, where we can get into this mode of just kind of eating or accepting whatever the devil has to tell us about our circumstances, about our situations. And so we can get ourselves in a place where we're like, oh yeah, I'll accept that I'm less than. I'll accept that the report over that situation is I'm always going to stay stuck. I'll accept the report over that situation that it's not going to work for my good. And we will just digest these lies from the enemy in our life. And it causes so much havoc and chaos and damage because, you know, you align yourself with either one of two reports. It can be the enemy report or the world report or the God report over your situation. And how many of you guys know that the power of life or death is in your words? Amen. And so I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this before, but your words don't just come out of nowhere. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about how the words that we speak kind of reveal our heart stance in a lot of ways. Amen. And so your words reveal a lot of times what's going on up here. You know, none of our actions and none of our words come from a place you know, where we haven't meditated on something, where we haven't been thinking about something ahead of time that caused us to enter into certain behaviors or whatever it is in our lives. Amen. And so, so many people have entered into, you know, behaviors or situations or places of sin in their life because their thinking was wrong. Amen. So many people have prevented themselves from stepping into seasons of blessing in their life as well because their thinking was wrong. Amen. It wasn't in alignment with what the word of God has to say over their situations. And so what I want to do is I want to read you guys some scriptures today. And then I want to walk you guys through some practical examples of what this might look like in our personal lives and what could be hindering you from stepping into a place of blessing. You know, I like to call this wilderness mindsets in our lives. Amen. And oftentimes wrong mindsets in our lives can be birthed from seasons of trauma. Amen. They can be birthed from hard situations that happened in our lives or seasons of disappointment or, you know, what all kinds of different stuff in our lives. Right. But if we aren't careful, you know, we can let those seeds, quote unquote, that the devil is trying to plant just kind of sit in our spirit. And if we never actively take out the sword of the spirit and come against this stuff, it can really do a lot of damage and the devil's weeds, quote unquote, can begin to grow in our lives and grow in our thought life. And then we surrender our authority over situations and it can stop us from stepping into the good things that God has for us. Amen. I always like to talk to you guys about this part too. We have been given by Jesus and what he did on the cross, not in our own strength, power and authority. Amen. The power is through the Holy Spirit. It's through God in our lives. And the authority is the ability to enforce God's will on this earth. Amen. Here's the deal. We've got both of those. The devil only has power, but he does not have authority. And so what his tactic is in your life as a Christian is for you to give up your authority over a situation, for you to give up hope, for you to stop contending for those promises, for you to back off of what God has told you. Amen. And if he can get you to that place where he can get your mindset wrong and fixed on the wrong thing so that you're focused on going towards that and diverted from the right things that God is trying to step you into your life, he's got you. He knows that he can completely wreck your life, wreck your circumstances, get you off course. If he can get you discouraged, if he can get you hopeless, if he can get you to give up your own rights and ability to take authority over different situations in your life, he knows he's got you. Amen. If he can keep you in a place of deception, if he can keep you in a place of hurt, of unforgiveness, of anger, of, you know, offense, whatever it is, he knows he's got you. 
ladies and gents. And so this is why it's so important that we are renewing our minds on a regular basis so that it doesn't give the enemy an inroad and also so that it doesn't prevent us from stepping into the very, very best that God has for us. Amen. It's critical. So I told myself that I was going to try not to stay on very long, but you know, every time I say that, I end up staying on for a while. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try it, ladies and gents. And so the first thing that I wanted to do is to read you probably the most important scripture that I will read you today. Okay, all of them are important um, because everything in the Bible is important. Amen. Um, but I wanted to read you uh, Romans 12, 2 today. This is really critical. It says, do not be conformed to this world, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed or changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. I absolutely love this scripture, and I want us to kind of break it down into bite-sized pieces to process through what this is really saying in our personal lives, okay? All right, so the first thing it says is, do not be conformed to this world or to this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external and superficial customs. In other words, it's going, you're not supposed to operate the same way as the world. You're not supposed to just adapt your life to doing things the same way that people in the world are doing them. That's not what you're called to in your life. And this is why it's so important. I'm going to grab it that you were in this book on a regular basis, amen? Because if you are not in this book on a regular basis, your default is going to be to do exactly what the scripture just said we should not do. It's, it's all of us. It's not even a conscious thing a lot of the time. We will divert towards operating like the world if we are not in this book on a regular basis, amen? You are going to act and behave like what you are digesting the most in your life, ladies and gents. So if you are digesting and listening to the world 24 seven, you're gonna act more like the world than you're gonna act like what God is calling us to. But if you were spending a good amount of time in this word and if you were applying its principles in your personal life, then you're gonna walk in the power of Christ, amen, in your life. And so that's the first part of this scripture is it says, do not be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to the way that everybody else is doing things. You're called to be set apart. You're called to do things differently, to operate differently. Amen. It says, but be transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and attitude. Okay. Um, and so let's talk about this. Transformation in our lives. So many people think that transformation just comes from shaping up, from acting better, right? But so often transformation has a root that has to start here. If you see a person that is quote unquote sick or has lack in any area of their life, I can almost guarantee you that they have some mindsets that are wrong. Amen. That's just, you know, scriptural. This is what the Bible says. Amen. And this is why I'm constantly harping on you guys about the importance of all of us, myself included, studying the Bible in the areas where we have lack, studying the Bible in the areas where we need breakthrough. Amen. This is really, really critical because your mind has to be transformed, ladies and gents. This is so important and such a big deal. Okay. It says, but be transformed or changed. Notice that it changes the whole being of who you are when you are in this book on a regular basis. The whole being of who you are. It literally is doing a transformation on the inside of you. Amen. And it will begin to manifest or you will begin to see it externally at some point if you are doing the work internally, ladies and gents. So it says, but be transformed or changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude. Okay. Whew, there's so much, I, again, I could spend so much time on this, but <laughs> I'm going to try to be as fast as I can today. So I don't keep you guys on here forever. But what I love about this is it says the entire renewal of your mind. Another thing that we are often so guilty of as Christians is we will have areas of strengths in our lives. Amen. So maybe you have conquered specific areas of your life and you're doing pretty well with that. God's helped you through that season. You've passed some tests. You've done some good stuff in some areas and that's awesome, you know, but so often we'll focus on our strengths and we'll completely neglect those areas where we're kind of out of line or when we're operating in disobedience, you know, so maybe 
maybe you're pretty good at avoiding sin in your life, but your attitude's awful. You know, maybe you just have a super negative attitude. Maybe your mouth is kind of the problem. Maybe you just complain a lot of the time. You see the negative, you know, a lot of the time in your personal life. So we've got these different areas in our lives a lot of the time because we're human, right? Where we will have areas of strengths and weaknesses. And what God is telling us is you need this whole book, okay? You don't just need part of the book. You don't need the part of the book that makes you feel comfortable. You don't need the part of the book where you're already kind of naturally strong at things. You know, let's say that maybe you don't have a strong, you don't have a problem with anger. You know, maybe you're a pretty easygoing person, um, but maybe you have a problem with discipline in different areas of your life, you know, um, and this can be different for different people, right? And so this is why it says the entire renewal of your mind. You've got to work on all of it, ladies and gents. And one of those, a lot of times we live with ourselves <laughs> on a regular basis, amen? And so a lot of times we don't even recognize the junk that's on our lives, amen? It takes someone else pointing it out or scripture pointing it out to us for us to see different areas where we need God's help and where we need him to kind of move us in the right direction. Amen. Cause we get used to ourselves, right? And there's, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but this is why we need the Bible as well on a regular basis. This book right here, this is a mirror in your life. Kind of like when you stare in the mirror when you're getting ready in the mornings, right? And you're looking at, you know, okay, well, this spot doesn't look good, or really I need to comb my hair over here. It's a hot mess here. You know, this book is a mirror. So that even if we can't see stuff ourselves that we need to work on, this book is a reflection that will reflect back to us our current heart states, our current stance with our thoughts, where we are at personally. Amen. And it'll show us, okay, you're doing good over here, but let's work on this a little bit. Let's tweak this a little bit in your personal life. You know, the Bible is the only book in the entire world that when you are reading it, it is reading you. Amen. The only book in the entire world. This discerns the attitudes, the thoughts, the intentions, the motives of the heart, ladies and gents. And so we need this, right? Because how many of you guys have had this before? I know I have this a lot. We're all entering into a God time and I will know that something's wrong. How many of you guys have ever entered into a personal time with the Lord when you were just in the bunk? Amen. I've had that before. And you're sitting there and you're going, God, I don't know how to fix me. I need you to fix me. I need you to help me to pinpoint what's going on. I need you to help me through this. I know something's off. I need you to help me to see it. And God himself and his word, because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God and his word are the same. Amen. This word helps you to identify what's going on in your life. Amen. So we need this constant reflection looking back at us on a regular basis. We need this thing discerning the thoughts and the motives of our heart. We need this renewal. And it all starts here. It starts in your mind, ladies and gents. And so um, your mind plays a critical role not just an important role, but a critical role in your victory and you stepping into seasons of victory in your personal life. Hey, LaMonda, am I getting that right? Good to see you from Kenya, that's awesome. Okay, so let's keep going in this scripture verse, all right? Be changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude. Let's focus on this attitude piece and let me grab some water here. I get ahead of myself a lot of time and my voice starts to go out. Okay, so it says um, by your new attitude. What would you guys consider your attitude? Do you guys have any thoughts on what that word attitude means to you? When I think of the word attitude, a lot of times I think about our perspective on life. Amen. You guys ever met someone, maybe it's in the workplace or maybe it's in your personal life or wherever it might be that just has a really rotten attitude about things. Man, these people are hard to be around, aren't they? And sometimes we can get into this ourselves too, right? If we aren't careful, these people will always see the negative, right? These people will always assume the worst of others. These people, it feels like they're continually in a bunk. Nothing ever goes their way, you know, and it's an attitude problem, right? And God says that it's our responsibility to renew our attitudes. Amen. That's a part of this scripture. Amen. 
And so part of it is aligning ourselves with the positive outlook that God has over our life, which means that even if you are walking through an awful season, a really negative season, you can focus on the God report. And by focusing on the God report and by using this word as a weapon or as a sword in your personal life and using the word of God to decree truth over a situation, even when hell is breaking loose on earth in your personal life, it can cause that situation to get into alignment and to line up with the word of God. And this is how we can be joyful in all circumstances and in all situations, ladies and gents, is by keeping ourselves anchored in this. You know, I tell you guys this a lot of the time, but I think it's really important to bring it up again. Your life is kind of like, okay, let me, let me describe it this way. You're on a lake, all right? You're on a raft in the middle of the lake and you close your eyes and you fall asleep. Before you know it, if you, let's say you wake up 30 minutes later, you're going to be on the other side of the lake, right? And it will feel like you haven't moved at all a lot of the time, right? But you did. You guys know the reason why you moved is because that current was there. And even though it was a slow current, because you were not anchored in anything, before you know it, and it was subtle, you have now drifted to the other side of the lake. Amen. And this is how the devil gets us in our lives as Christians a lot of the time. He won't get us through outright things where he gets us to get off track a lot of the time. Sometimes he can do that, right, if it's an area of weakness. But a lot of times he likes to move more subtly, and he's patient with us, right, so that over time, you know, over the course of a year or two, you all of a sudden wake up one day and you go, wow, I'm lukewarm. How did that happen? It was subtle, right? You, you started, you stopped going to church over time, you know, you stopped being in the word every single day, you know, and slowly it started to taper off in your life. You stopped, you know, being in, you know, fellowship with Christians or people who have the same ideals and beliefs. And you started slowly hanging out around mostly unbelievers. You know, he's very subtle in the way that he does this in our lives a lot of the time. And before you know it, if you're not anchored in the word of God, it will cause your boat, quote unquote, to drift. And you won't even realize it a lot of the time until it's already in a very not good situation. Amen. So this is why it's so important for us to be anchored in the word of God, because just like I want you to imagine this, let's say you're on that same raft in the middle of a lake. And let's say that instead of not being anchored by anything, you had an anchor and you threw it down and it was attached. Well, the odds are that when you woke up, just because you were anchored, you would be in a much better place and in a situation where you wouldn't have moved across the lake. Amen. And it has to do with whether or not you were anchored. This book anchors you so that when the storms of life comes, when the devil tries to throw things at you in your personal life, you were anchored in this book. Amen. So that it might shake you up a little bit. It might rock you a little bit, but you're not going anywhere. Amen. Because you have renewed your mind. You're focused on what the word of God has to say over your situation so that when he tries to get you off course, you can come right back on course and go, nope, I'm anchored. This is my anchor. Amen. And so it's really, really critical. And so this is how we renew our attitude as well, is focusing on the God report, even when our situations look completely opposite in the natural. Okay, let's focus on to the next part of this verse. It says, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So that means that we should be focused on these things. Amen. And that's what the Bible does for us on a regular basis. We're focused on the things that are good. We're focused on the good report, not the enemy report, not the bad report. Amen. We're focused on the acceptable and the perfect will of God. The Bible is the perfect will of God. Amen. And that is his will over your circumstances. I tell you guys this all the time. You cannot discern a lie if you don't know the truth. Amen. And that's how the devil gets 99.9% .9 of Christians is in, you know, getting them in this place of deception is because he will cause them to believe a slight lie over their situation. Amen. He will cause them to believe a lie. And if they don't know the truth, they don't know to come against the lie. They don't know what that lie looks like in their personal lives. And so this is why renewing our minds is so critical in our personal lives. Amen. And so again, your mind plays a critical role in your victory and your ability to step into seasons of victory in your personal life. You know, God could want it for you for years. Amen. He could want to bring you into that season of blessing, to that breakthrough, to that ministry, whatever it looks like, that, you know, breakthrough in your workplace. 
But if your mind is still a mess, it's going to prevent you to, to a certain extent from being able to step into things. If you're holding on to these wilderness mentalities, you're holding on to these places in your life that are just not, you know, good because your mindset can abort your promise, even if God is trying to give it to you. Amen. You know, if your mindset says, oh, I'm not good enough to receive this thing, you won't go for the opportunity. Amen. Let's let's hop into this. I'm hopping a little bit ahead of myself here. But remember, I talked to you guys um, at the beginning and I said, if your mind is sick, you will be sick. Amen. And that's not always talking about a physical infirmity that could be holding you back in different areas of your life. A few examples I wrote down. So let's say that you are trying to lose weight in your personal life and you have a mindset of, oh, I'm just always going to be this way. I can never overcome this thing. You know, I've got this, this, and this that's against me and it's always easier on everybody else. And so I might as well not even try because I'm never going to be able to overcome this thing. That's not what the Bible says, ladies and gents. Yeah, you may have some extra barriers going against you that other people don't have. I'm not, you know, saying that's not the case. But what I am saying is if God has said that you're healed, you're healed. If God God has said you have supernatural victory you've got supernatural victory and if that mindset is still thinking like a sick person you know you're not gonna walk in the place of health amen your mindset has to change first before you're gonna see that change a lot of time in your physical body you got to start thinking like a healthy whole person you know you've got to start saying stuff to yourself like I am more than capable I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me amen if God says I'm healed I'm healed you know I enjoy healthy food I only eat healthy food I nourish my body the right way. You know, you've got to change your thinking a lot of the time before you're going to be able to step into a place of victory. Let's talk about something else. Let's say that you are, you know, really, really needing to step into a new job. Amen. And it's well past time for you to be in a place of promotion. Okay. And let's say that you've really been praying about it. You know, let's say that you've been faithful to a company for years and years and years, and this position rolls around that you would be a perfect fit for, right? Let's say that it's like the big boss, you know, CEO kind of a thing. And you know, you have been, you know, you were like the perfect fit for this kind of a thing. Well, if your mindset says, oh, well, I don't see myself as a boss. I'm not, I mean, I'm not really, sure that I, I want to handle the extra responsibility. I'm just not really sure this is kind of my deal. You know, I'm not sure that I'm good enough for this. You're not going to apply for that job. It doesn't matter. You could be the perfect fit for that thing. But if you don't believe that you're in a good enough place, you're not going to step out on the things that God has for you. Maybe you're called to start a business and you have made it a mountain in your mind. Man, God, I just don't know all the steps to take. And it's too much. It's too daunting for me to research it. It's too much for me to try to go after these things. It's too risky for me to give up my nine to five or to try to ease out of that. I don't know what the next step is, so I'm just not even going to try. Those are wilderness mentalities. Qualities, ladies and gents, that's what's preventing you from stepping into that breakthrough. Amen. You know, I think that so often we like to blame the devil for stuff. And yes, he's planting these wrong thoughts, but we've got to learn how to take some ownership as well. Ladies and gents, when you notice some thoughts that are not aligned with victory or, and are not aligned with the word of God, it is our job to take those thoughts captive. Amen. And to make them, to force them to come into alignment with the word of God and what he has to say over your situation. Amen. You know, this can apply to relationships. You know, you can tell yourself, oh, I'm not good enough to talk to people who are healthy. You know, I'm just kind of down here and that person's really up here. And so I'm just not even going to attempt it because I could get hurt. I could get disappointed. Listen to me, ladies and gents. This is something that so many of leaders, secular and non-secular in this world, have realized in their lives. You got to be willing to fail some and take chances. Amen. You know, um, I think that so often we prevent ourselves from learning, and I'm guilty of this a lot of the time. I'm, I'm speaking myself on this, ladies and gents. But I think that so often we prevent ourselves from moving forward into seasons of victory in our lives because we're so afraid of the place of failure. You know, we can get perfectionistic and go, oh, I have to be perfect. I can't look like a fool in this situation. I can't step out on this thing. And God's going, you know what? Part of that, you know, don't do something that doesn't line up with the word of God and obviously pray about things before you go do them. 
But you know what? We're so afraid to step out on different things and to assume a mindset of victory because it makes us feel vulnerable a lot of the time. And so many of us will run from that place of vulnerability in our lives because if we're vulnerable, we have to rely on God. Amen. If we're vulnerable, you know, a lot of times we will internalize that. And instead of saying, you know, this situation didn't work out, we will say, I'm not good enough. Amen. We will take that on ourselves. And God's going, you know what? That's not healthy either. Amen. You've got to get to a place where you so know your worth in Christ, where you go, you know what, God, I am so grateful that you love me, you know, separate from my actions. You know, we live in a society that is very performance based, don't we? You know, if we don't do well at work, we can get written up you know, or we can get a bad performance review. Amen. You know, if we don't do well enough, a lot of people will reject you or do different stuff. But you know what? God loves you regardless. And that's not an excuse to sin. Ladies and gents, do not get me wrong. Okay. But what I am saying is there's safety in God. Amen. And you can know that he loves you on your good days and on your bad days, ladies and gents. And when you know that your worth comes from the fact that Jesus was willing to die a brutal death on the cross for you and that you don't have to be perfect for him to love you and to help you on your journey, it sets you free, ladies and gents. It will bring so much freedom into your life. And so you've got to change these icky wilderness mindsets if you want to step into the things that God has for you. Amen. Some of, so many of you guys have assumed that you're less than or that other people automatically hate you or that you're automatically not going to get the opportunity and you're unwilling to try for things that are outside of your comfort zone just because you've never done them before and it might make you look silly. Amen. These are wilderness mindsets. You know, um, an example from my personal life that I did... Um, a little while back, it was probably close to a year ago now. I completely changed job fields. You know, um, I hope to be doing ministry full time, you know, one day, you know, writing books and speaking and all of that, but that's not where I'm at yet. Um, and so I still work kind of an eight to five kind of a job. Um, and I, you know, completely changed career fields um, about little over a year ago maybe and it was a scary thing for me you know I was applying for jobs that I, honestly I, I thought there was no way on earth no way that I would get you know even thought about for some of these things that I was applying for or whatever because I had zero experience right you know I had some applicable skills I guess <laughs> you know but I didn't have like a lot of experience in these different areas that I was wanting to try for and so you know I was just kind of like well I mean I'll do it, but I don't know how this is gonna work out. It was one of those, right? Turns out I got a job that has kind of sparked this whole new trajectory in my career path, and it has been so awesome, ladies and gents. Like, it's been great, you know? I found out that I really enjoy this new thing, and what would have happened if I would have not just took a baby step and put my feet out there and said, well, maybe let me just give this a chance. And I told God, you open the door if it's of you. If it's not, you shut the door, amen? And so, I think that so often we lean towards what's comfortable in our lives and we will automatically rule ourselves out before we've even given other people a chance or given ourselves a chance, you know, to look at things with a different perspective or to act on things, you know. I think that a lot of times we will group people and experiences based on what we've had happen to us in our past. Who am I talking to today? And we will assume either the best or the worst over a situation just because we've seen it happen a certain way in our past. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't ever use the past as a reference um, because I think that sometimes we can learn from that and grow and it can prevent us from stepping into bad situations. But there's also an unhealthy side of that where you can group, you know, just because one person hurt you in the past that all people in your future are going to act that way, that all men are bad or all women are bad or that all jobs are going to be this way. All circumstances are going to be this way. You know, pick whatever you want and insert here, right? But if we aren't careful, we can get ourselves into wilderness mindsets like that, you know, where we become so fragile, <laughs> you know, because of past seasons of trauma or hurt that we just assume the worst of everybody, assume the worst of situations. And how about this? Sometimes assume the worst of ourselves. Amen. We've got to get rid of this stuff if you want to walk into a season of victory. Often it is your mind that is holding you back from these places of promise that God wants to step you into because you don't believe you're good enough. You're walking around in condemnation. You know, you're believing the worst of others. You've got all this junk on your mind. You're not knowing what the Bible has to say.
say about your situation. So you're aligning yourself with the devil's report over that situation rather than proclaiming the God report. The devil has convinced you that prayer doesn't work in your personal life. But he's got you in this discouraged place and so you're not wanting to pray because you feel like it's pointless because it's been such a hard season of defeat in your past. Who am I talking to today? I know this is not just me. I know this is stuff that we've all walked through. Amen. But you've got to use the word of God to come against this stuff and to decree the God report over these situations. Amen. To renew your attitude, to renew your mind so that you can step into a place of victory. Amen. This is really, really critical because what if God were to give you that thing of blessing in your life when your mind was still thinking like Egypt? You'd abort the promise. 99.9% .9 of the time, ladies and gents. And so God in his love will sometimes withhold this stuff, not trying to be mean. He wants you to have it worse than you even want it, ladies and gents, a lot of the time. But if he were to give it to you while you were still thinking wilderness, you would abort it to begin with. You know, if you didn't feel like you were good enough to be the CEO of the company, you know, and he were to gift you with that thing and you didn't go in with a confident attitude, not a prideful attitude, but a confident attitude. If you didn't really feel like you could bring good change, if you didn't really feel like you had anything that you could contribute, your actions, your mind would align with that enemy report and the company might end up going under and it might end up costing you your job. Amen. Some of you guys need to believe who you are in Christ and you need to be okay with, you know, going, God, you know, I want to get real with you here. These are the areas of my life where I need to improve. Help me to improve. You know, so many of us, that's a whole nother topic for another day, but I'm going to touch on a little bit here. So many of us are so afraid to bring those areas of lack where we need God's help to God because it feels like we failed if we bring those areas to him where we truly need help and where we're not there yet. Amen. Sometimes it can be extremely hard to bring up to God and to go, yeah, God, I'm sorry. I've got a pride problem. You know, I really need you to help me in this area, you know, or God, I've got a gossip problem in my life. You know, I can't control my tongue because we feel like, because our society has conditioned us to this, that if we admit those things out loud, if we say the quiet part out loud, quote unquote, that we ourselves are less than. That's kind of what the world tells us. They go, you know, if you say these things out loud, you know, if you say that you've got a porn problem, if you say that you've got a problem with your thoughts, if you say that you've got a problem with overeating, whatever it may be, if you say the quiet part out loud, that means that you're less than. The devil will immediately try to come into our lives and he will try to point the finger at us and he will try to say you are less than because you are still struggling in these areas. That's not what God says. Amen. Yes, he wants you to address that because he doesn't want the devil to have a stronghold over you in any area of your life. He doesn't want you to be under attack. But, you know, the devil doesn't want you to say that stuff out loud because when sin is exposed to darkness, when areas of weakness in our lives are exposed to the light, you know, it causes that stuff to no longer have a hold over you. Amen. When we expose that place of sin, when we expose these places of weakness, when we truly get vulnerable and we bring this stuff to the Lord, it allows him to work through it with you. But you know what? God is a gentleman. He does not force himself on you in your personal life. And so often what we do is we walk around with our fingers in our ears and we go, la, 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 la. And we act like that area of hardship doesn't exist in our lives. Amen. Just because we don't want to be associated with that ugly monster, with that person, with that situation that we're struggling with. And when we don't deal with it. This can prevent us from stepping into the seasons of breakthrough that God is wanting you to be able to step into in your personal life. This is what holds us back so often, ladies and gents. We're scared to get vulnerable with God. We're scared to talk about the stuff that we need to talk about. We're scared to address our past. We're scared to work through stuff. Amen. You know, there's a powerful true story of a lady who got healed from cancer a while back. And, you know, she got diagnosed and she was absolutely terrified. And she was like, God, what do I do with this? And God told her to do several different things. You know, um, how many of you guys know that sometimes, not always, sometimes sickness is a result of sin in our personal lives. Amen. Not always. We see clear examples from the Bible of times when it's not. Sometimes it's simply because we live in a fallen world and life happens. Amen. But what this woman did is she went to God in her prayer time and she said, God, 
what do I do? How do I get healed from this? And rather than just healing her on the spot, I love those moments, I'm sure you guys do too, he told her some action steps that she needed to take in her life in order to receive her healing. And one of the first things was, he said, you need to clean up your diet, get rid of all this junk in your diet, um, and start focusing on eating some healthy things. So that's one of the first things that she did is she drastically changed that part of her life. But the other thing that was really, really critical is God told her you were holding on to unforgiveness in your life towards a bunch of different people. All these different people you're holding on to unforgiveness against these people. And he's like, it's affecting your health. How many of you guys know that sometimes our internal junk affects our health and our external junk? We don't think about this a lot of the time, but it is a scriptural principle, amen? And so she, um, she went and what she did was she wrote letters to all of the people that she could track down. She couldn't track down all of them, but she got real with God and she allowed that hurt to get processed. She truly forgave these people and she wrote letters to all these people apologizing to them um, and asking for their forgiveness that she had been holding unforgiveness. She made peace with these people. She finally let stuff go. And how many of you guys know that cancer broke off of her body? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That cancer was gone. And she went into the doctors and the doctors could not figure it out. They said, this is a miracle. How did this happen? And she was like, well, I got real with myself and I dealt with the junk of my life. Amen. You know, and for some of us, we don't realize how much we are hindering ourselves. Some of you guys are in crazy, stressful, bad for you situations. And, you know, you don't realize that it's impacting your health, it's impacting your life, it's impacting your ability to get breakthrough. You know, you're holding on to offense, you're holding on to bitterness, you're holding on to all this stuff, and all of this is spilling over into other areas of your life, and you're not even realizing it. You know, in the Old Testament, I did not plan on talking about this, but it uh, ties in. In the Old Testament, there's a story where there is a woman who, um, whenever a woman was accused of committing adultery or cheating on her spouse or whatever it was, um, she was instructed to drink bitter water, all right? And what this bitter water would do was if she was guilty, it would make her belly swell. It would make her swell up, amen? It was a physical manifestation of something that had happened internally. But if she was, you know, free and if she didn't do anything, it would have zero effect on her and they could go on about their life. So if an accusation came, you know, um, that's what would happen. I, I like that story just because it's so symbolic. Amen. It's so symbolic of what happens in our lives. When we do internal junk and when we refuse to deal with the junk that's going on inside of us and get vulnerable with God and really address this stuff, it can cause physical manifestations in our life that can prevent us from stepping into places of breakthrough, that can affect our health, that can affect who we are as a person and the things that God is trying to deliver into our personal lives. Amen. And so all of that to say, your mind is critical, ladies and gents. And, and you know, the devil will plant lies in your mind. He will plant these things in your mind. Then all he wants you to do is to clamp down on that stuff. And if he can get you to believe the wrong report, to receive the wrong report, you know, all of this stuff, he can send you into tailspins in different areas of your life, which is why it's so important that we have this examining us on a regular basis. Amen. Remember the Bible reads us. It's like a mirror in our lives and it shows us what's going on on and we need those personal times with God more than ever. You know, God, I don't know if you guys noticed, I took a day off yesterday um, from doing movies and uh, stuff or videos for you guys um, just because I needed some personal time with God. I needed a Jill and God day. Amen. Um, and that's so important in your walk with God, ladies and gents. It's so important, you know, that you have those times with the Lord where you really focus on just your relationship with him. Amen. Where you focus on his goodness and who he is in your personal life and allowing him to dig into that deeper stuff that's going on inside of you. Amen. Because that's what keeps you healthy in your walk with God. Amen. You've got to have those times in your life where you just allow God to fill you up. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was in a funk yesterday. I I had some attitude stuff going on that morning where I was just depressed. I was dealing with some stuff and I, you know, I immediately brought it to God and I was like, why am I in a funk? He said, you need to worship. Hello. Sometimes it's such a simple solution. You know, he goes, you need to praise me ahead of time for the victory. Turn on some worship music and just thank me, you know, and sure enough, the funk lifted. Amen. You know, and so I think that we make things too complicated sometimes. Amen. I think that we get ourselves in such a complicated place where we don't allow God to just do his thing. You know, I think that so often what God needs from us is just time and space. 
Amen. You know, he needs us to just come to him. Some of the most powerful God times that I've ever had in my life were sitting on the floor in my living room or on the couch or wherever with zero music on, just me, you know, setting aside time with God and saying, God, what do you want to say today? How do you want to work on me? We don't have to make it fancy. You don't have to have lights, fog machines, music, fanciness. I mean, you know, if, if you choose to go there, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. But God can meet you where you're at, ladies and gents. And he just needs that time with you. Amen. He's like, I just need you to give me the time. I, I give you guys this example all the time too, but I think it's really powerful for us to bring up. If I take a pebble, okay, let's say I'm standing beside this really pretty, um, you know, stream, for example, okay, and I take a pebble or a rock and I throw it into some rapids, some fast moving water. Am I likely to hear that pebble when it hits the water? Probably not, right? Because the environment is going to be very noisy from the sound of rushing water going on, right? But if I were to take that exact same rock or pebble and I were to throw it into a peaceful, serene lake where there's nothing going on, there's no people around, you don't hear much of the birds chirping, it's just really, really quiet, and I were to take that pebble and throw it into the lake, what are the odds that I would hear that pebble hit the water? A lot higher, right? Why? Because the environment isn't as noisy. There's not distractions going on, all of this stuff. And I think that that's why it's so important that in our personal lives that we are making time for God. Amen. We are making time to set aside distractions. Take your cell phone, turn it off, ladies and gents, and put it in the other room. I feel like that's a huge distraction to so many of us. You know, take some time where you're not watching the TV, where you're not watching, you know, whatever your streaming service is. You know, take some time where you can be separate from your family for a little bit. Maybe that means waking up a little bit earlier in the mornings. Or maybe you're a night person. Maybe that means setting some time aside where you don't have your phone before bed, where you can just read the Bible for a little while. You know, when we are in such noisy environments and when we have so much distraction going on in our lives, God's talking to us a lot of the time, whether we realize it or not but we ourselves will miss it because of the noisiness and because of the distraction. The pebbles gonna hit the water and make a sound either way, right? Whether I'm throwing it into rapids or I'm throwing it into a pond, but I'm not gonna hear it if I'm throwing it into the rapids, right? Because the water's gonna be so noisy around it that you're gonna miss it, ladies and gents. And so God wants to talk to you, but a lot of times we've gotta give him the space to be able to hear from him. You know, I think this is why fasting is so important in our lives as a Christian, amen? The Bible doesn't say if you fast, it says when you fast, amen? And you know, fasting is critical because it kills off our flesh, amen? It causes our flesh to not be the one in charge and in control, amen? It's amazing to me how much we are led by our flesh on a regular basis. And I think that so often that's why when people fast, they get breakthrough is because they, it kind of shifts us a lot of the time excuse me, to where our flesh is no longer calling the shots, but where our spirit starts to call the shots. And we could crucify our flesh and go, no flesh, you can cry all you want, but I'm not eating that slice of pizza right now. We're talking to Jesus, you know? And it tells your flesh who's really in control and who's really in charge. And your flesh will pitch a fit, amen? It will not like it a lot of the time, but a lot of times that's why it's so important for us to do those check-ins with God, um, sometimes is because we need those times where we need to kind of tell our flesh, no, you're not in charge. You know, there will be times in my life where I have fasted social media and I know that technically a fast is food, but it's symbolic. Work with me here. Okay. Um, but there will be times where I tell myself, okay, we're not doing social media today. This has got too much of a stronghold in my life. I'm wasting too much time on this, you know, and so I'll go, my flesh is really in control of this area of my life. So I'm going to get rid of it for a few days. And it's always torture. <laughs> You know, when I choose to do that stuff a lot of the time, but it's critical, you know, because if there's any area of your life where something else is calling the shots more than God is calling the shots, that's an area where we need to examine it and go, okay, I need to take a step back back from this thing for a little while. Amen. Because we, before you know it, you can fall into a place of idolatry. You can fall into a place of, you know, all kinds of different stuff in your life that can cause just chaos. Amen. And so God wants to be the one who's ultimately in charge and in control in your life. Amen. And fasting is a great way of us kind of quieting the noise, stilling the noise and getting our personal time aside with God and going, God, you know, what are you trying to say to me? You know, I need to hear from you. I need your help in these different situations. Amen. So really, really critical. I kind of went off into a rabbit trail there, um, but I've got a few more scriptures that I want to walk us through 
talking about the importance of your mind, okay? So here's another phrase that I wanted to say to you guys that I think is really, really critical. If you want to do what the Word of God has to say, you have to spend time thinking about what the Word of God has to say over your situation. Amen? So often, we will spend all of our time, and I'm not hating, I'm talking to myself on this too, okay? I've been guilty of these exact same things that I'm talking to you guys about. We all, you know, need to focus on the Word of God and trying to do the best we can in these areas. But you know what? Let's say that you spend five or six hours a day on social media. Amen. And you spend maybe five minutes a day in the word of God. What do you think you're thinking is going to be more in alignment with the world or with the Bible? Amen. It's going to be more in alignment with the world in a lot of ways because you have spent the majority of your time and your day focused on the world report over the God report and what all this other stuff is saying in your personal life. Now, I'm not saying that social media is bad. Obviously, we're on here talking about Jesus, right? God can use any of this stuff for his good a lot of the time. But when it's a problem is when we become more focused on the world report than we are on the God report, and we're never taking any time in our lives to separate ourselves, to focus on Jesus, and to really, you know, think about what we're thinking about, to think about what the word of God has to say over our situations. Amen. And so that's really, really important. You've got to spend time thinking about what the word of God has to say, chewing on the word of God, you know, on a regular basis. You know, I think I've told you guys a story before, but when I received my supernatural healing back in the day for that lymph node situation that was out of control, I would just eat the word of God is the way that I'm going to describe it. I chewed on scripture verses that had to do with God's victory over my life in the morning and at night on a regular basis. It was daily. I was just, you know, digesting what the word of God, what truth had to say about my situation. And for some of you guys, the problem is not that you don't know the Bible. A lot of you guys know these scriptures we're talking about today. You've heard them before. You've heard them preach from the pulpit. You've read them before in your personal life. But the problem is you have a knowledge of them, but your heart has not died digested it yet. Your heart is not in alignment. The belief is not truly there. You're dealing with unbelief in your personal life because you have been digesting the world report more than you have been digesting the God report. And you've got to work on your mind. Amen. You've got to receive the word of God in your mind. You've got to eat it more in your personal life. Amen. So that it's not just something that you kind of just sort of know of, but it's something that you will then in turn start to really believe. Amen. And faith in our lives comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the way that we renew our faith, that we strengthen our faith, that we get rid of unbelief in our lives is by chewing on the word of God and by hearing it on a regular basis. You know, um, they've done studies. I think I've told you guys this before that you are a lot more likely to believe something that you personally say that comes out of your mouth than something that someone else tells you. Amen. And so that's why it's so important that, you know, listening to other people is good. You know, I listen to other people um, on a regular basis who are talking about Jesus, who are talking about good stuff, and we need that in our personal lives. But to a certain extent, you guys need to get into this word for yourself and learn to speak it out loud because you know what? You've got to learn to digest this for yourself. Amen. You've got to have your own walk with God where you learn what it sounds like when he speaks to you personally, when he's talking to you about a situation, you know, where you can really decree the word of God over your situation where you believe it yourself. There's just something really incredibly powerful about that, ladies and gents. So I wanted to read you um, Joshua 1.8. This is another powerful one today. And it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall deal wisely and have good success. This is a whole, <laughs> this is a whole nother one we could really break down. Um, so first of all, it says the word of God should not depart from your mouth. Are you speaking the word of God on a regular basis? You know, scripture tells us that angels hearken to the word of God. It doesn't hearken to your complaining. It doesn't hearken to you just speaking idle words. It hearkens to the book. It hearkens to the Bible and scripture being decreed. Some of you guys just need to get in the habit of decreeing scripture over your situations. Some of you guys are doing zero of this right now. Maybe you're praying. That's a great start. But maybe you're not praying the word of God. You're not decreeing scripture over your situation. Angels are dispatched when scripture is decreed, ladies and gents. And some of you guys have got to get in the habit of decreeing the truth of the word of God over your situation so that stuff can start to move and shift. Amen. 
So it says the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Because remember, your thoughts influence your words and your words produce either life or death over your situation and your words have power. Amen. So it's so important for you to meditate on truth 24 seven, because when you are meditating on the God report, when you are meditating on the truth of the word of God, guess what's going to start coming out of your mouth in hard times. Guess what's going to start coming out of your mouth when that storm hits your life. When you are constantly focused on what the word of God has to say about your situation, the right stuff is going to start coming out of your mouth and you're going to see those situations start to shift. Amen. So it says, you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. I can't tell you how important that one little phrase is, ladies and gents. I have talked to so many Christians who they believe the Bible, they've heard the Bible, but they don't implement it in their personal lives one iota. How many of you guys have met these people before? You know, maturity in your life as a Christian is not knowing the word of God. It is living the word of God in your personal life. Hello, who am I talking to today? You know, maturity is not just having an understanding of the Bible. There are great theologians, great scholars, people, even atheists who have studied the Bible probably more than a lot of us have. Amen. But they don't implement it in their personal life. And that's not walking in a place of maturity, ladies and gents. You know, you've got to renew your mind and then you've got to actually do what the Bible is asking you to do in your personal life. If you want to see victory in all areas of your life. Amen. This is really, really critical. Okay. Observe and do all according to that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. How many of you guys know that your Bible times and your time with God every day is directly linked to your prosperity and your success in your personal life? Did you guys catch that? That's what the scripture just said. Amen. So often we like to try to attribute it to other things. But this scripture just said that it, when you spend your time in the word, when you digest this word on a regular basis, when you're thinking on the right things, when you're decreeing the right things, only then it shall make your way prosperous. You're going to start to see prosperity in the areas of your life where you're studying, chewing, meditating, decreeing the word of God. And then it says it's going to give you wisdom. You will deal wisely with situations. Amen. When you're in the word on a regular basis, it's going to bring wisdom into your life. Amen. You're going to catch things more quickly. You're going to recognize truth over situations better. Amen. And it will bring you good success. I want you guys to think about the areas of your life where you are lacking success at this current moment in time, where you are believing God for a breakthrough. Those are areas where you need to study in the word of God. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe you are really struggling with finances right now. You need to spend your God time studying finances out the wazoo and what God has to say about your finances. Amen. It's going to bring you success. It says good success, not just success, but good success. Amen. Prosperity. It says God's going to make your way prosperous in your personal life. Amen. This is why God asks us to do stuff. Amen. It's because he knows it's what's best for us. He knows that it's going to be what's good for us, ladies and gents. And so if you see an area of your life where you're struggling or where you're constantly fighting with lies from the enemy, that's an area where you need to get out scripture and write down and decree out loud the scripture of what God has to say over your situation. Maybe a lie from the enemy can be that God doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about that area of your life. You've been waiting on that promise for years of your life. What makes you think that God cares about that thing? What makes you think that God cares about the desires of your heart? You need to go look up scriptures on the desires of your heart and you need to use them as a sword and start coming against these lies from the devil. Amen. You know, so often we just sit there and we take it. We're being absolutely pelted by the enemy camp in these different areas of our lives. And a lot of you guys could tell me the lies that the enemy has spoken into your life. You right off the bat could tell me, I had a friend back in the day who the number one lie that she believed over her life was that she was dumb. You know, a prominent figure in her life spoke that over her at a young age. And, you know, she just, you know, believed it for forever. You know, she just accepted it and chewed on that thing and believed on that thing. And, you know, she accepted it as the God report. Now she was incredibly smart. This is a person who was really, really smart. But because she had accepted that lie from the enemy and she had never done anything with that mindset, she just accepted it to be true in her personal life. 
and she just decided that she was going to eat that report, quote unquote, and she meditated on it and it caused chaos in her life in different areas. And the sad part was it wasn't even true. I wonder how many lies that we have believed in our personal lives just because the devil spoke it or a person who was having a bad day spoke it over us and we just assumed that it was who we are. We let that thing become a part of our identity and God's going, it is time for you guys to break those shackles, to break those chains off of you. Your job is to believe only what the Bible has to say about you. I'll give you guys another example of mindset stuff that is um, really, really critical. I had a friend um, who, um, bless her heart, she's kind of like me. She was not athletically inclined. Amen. <laughs> um, and, you know, she was like, a little bit on the clumsy side was not always as you know naturally adapted towards that kind of stuff um but the cool part about her was she was completely oblivious to this okay <laughs> like she was a person who if you had told her that she was not good at this stuff she kind of wouldn't have believed you kind of a thing her mindset was towards victory in these different areas. And so she was out there doing what a lot of the other athletes were doing. You know, she would go for runs, you know, she'd go play tennis with people, she'd go do stuff. And you would hear people who would talk afterwards and they're like, man, she's not really good. You know, they would kind of just kind of be like, whatever. But what's so cool about it is she didn't think that in her mind. She thought of herself as an athlete. She thought of her, uh, her herself as really good. And guess what? She improved over time. Amen. She got better and she was right up there with them, you know, at the end of all of this, you know. And so all of that to say her mindset led her towards a place of victory, even when she wasn't walking in it to begin with, even when it wasn't an area of natural strength. You know, how powerful are our minds? ladies and gents. And you know, the other cool thing about it was she chose not to receive other people's reports that were speaking negatively of her and over that situation. Amen. We have a choice whose report we're going to receive over our lives. Amen. So many of you guys have received reports from people who, you know, they don't even know what they truly believe themselves. Hello. You know, so many of these people, their whole life perspective had changed from what it was three years ago. And you received something that they said to you two or three years ago that was negative over your situation. And they don't even believe the same things anymore. Amen. This is why people pleasing can be so dangerous because it can cause us to receive word curses from people and junk and condemnation and all this mess from people who aren't even really anchored themselves in a lot of these different areas. Amen. And so that's why you need to believe the God report over your situation and what he has to say about you. Amen. And you've got to shake off these word curses. Some of you guys need to break off word curses that have been spoken over you. Amen. When you're in this process of renewing your mind, maybe you had an ex who spoke word curses over you. Maybe your parents spoke word curses over you. Maybe your employer spoke word curses over you. Some of you guys need to break this stuff in the spirit because remember your words have life and death. Amen. And their words have life and death. And the problem is if they had spoken that stuff over you and you hadn't received it, it wouldn't have been as big of a deal. But for some of you guys, you received it. They told you you were ugly and you went, well, I guess I must be ugly. You received it. You ate it, ladies and gents. And some of you guys need to break these word curses, get yourself out of alignment with what other people have spoken and decreed over your life and go, I don't receive that anymore. Amen. Forgive me, God, for getting in alignment with the enemy report for years of my life and what he had to say about me and what they had to say about me. God, I choose to keep myself in alignment with your report and what you are trying to say to me over my personal life right now. Amen. Some of you guys, it is time to clean house in your mind. You guys ever have those times where you do a deep clean on your house and your just whole emotional and mental well-being feels better? You know, I'm getting ready. I've got a friend who's coming into town tomorrow to spend some time with me because, um, She's going to be in town for a little bit. And so I have been in cleaning mode a little bit today where I have been trying to clean some things and to deep clean some things. And how many of you guys know that it just makes you feel better, doesn't it? It makes you feel better to have a clean house, makes you feel better to have your life feeling like it's in order. Amen. And some of you guys need to clean house in your mind. You have not done a deep clean in your mind in ages. You've just been receiving the junk of the enemy, receiving these lies, receiving all of these things, and you haven't cleaned out any of the old junk. Some of you guys have closets full of junk, quote unquote, in your mind that is sitting there and that is collecting dust that is not even applicable in your life. And you need to go clean out some closets. And then you need to go remove some word curses, remove some reports, remove some wrong attitudes, remove some hindering attitudes that have been preventing you from receiving God's best in your personal life. And you need to clean this stuff out so that you can receive the very best that he has for you in these different areas. This is critical, ladies and gents. 
So all of that to say, if you want to be a success and prosper in everything in your life, in every area of your life, the Bible says you've got to meditate. You've got to chew on the word of God day and night in your personal life. Because when you chew on truth, your life will start to align with truth eventually, ladies and gents. And it may not happen overnight. You know, if you've been operating in mostly unbelief and mostly meditating on the world report, you know, it might take a little bit of time of refocusing on truth and getting your life back on track and renewing your mind before you're going to see changes. But it will start to come, ladies and gents. So often we are so impatient with with God. Amen. We go, oh, I studied the word of God one time in this area and I didn't see any change. So I guess I'm going to give up. I prayed over this thing one time, God, and I didn't see any change. So I guess I'm going to give up. You know, what would happen if we treated, I don't know, doctors this way in the natural? What if they prescribed us an antibiotic? Let's say you're dealing with an infection in your body and they prescribed you an antibiotic and you took one pill of it and you go, oh, it's not working, doc. I'm going to stop taking this. I'm going to quit believing in this because I didn't see the change in my body day one. And he's going, well, you got to finish the pack. You got to take all the pills. There's like two weeks of this stuff. You can't come back and say that it's not working day one. Amen. And so how silly is it that we're willing to give worldly things a chance in our lives, but we're not willing to give the word of God a chance in our lives. Amen. Some of you guys need to meditate on this stuff day and night, and you need to learn how to digest it. Change these old mindsets, change these belief systems about yourself and others. And you need to stick with it for a while. Ladies and gents, you need to stick with this stuff and not just give up on day two when you don't see what you want and come to pass instantly. And you guys need to believe that God is working in the unseen. You know, faith believes in the area of the unseen before you ever see it come to pass in the natural. Amen. And so this stuff is so heavily connected in your personal life, ladies and gents. And it's so important that we are taking our medicine on a regular basis, you know. The Bible says that the word of God is a medicine to us. When you are digesting scripture on a regular basis, it's like you're taking your nightly pills, your morning pills, whenever you take stuff, amen? You are giving yourself a dose of truth, a dose of healing every time you focus on this stuff, ladies and gents. And this is what renews your mind and the renewal of your mind is what's gonna bring victory in your life. Ladies and gents, you following me with how critical this is? Okay, let's keep going. I told you guys I was probably going to be on here a hot minute, and I've been on here a hot minute. But I'll try to get through these last few um, more quickly. Okay, so Matthew 8, 13 says, It shall be done for you as you have believed. I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. I think that so often we can look over little bitty powerful scriptures like this one. Often, the reason that you're not seeing victory in these areas of your life is you're believing wrong because your, thought, your thoughts, your mindsets have been wrong for so long. You've been aligned in the place of unbelief for so long. You know what scripture has to say over your situation. You know, maybe you've even got the Bible verse memorized, but you don't believe it. You haven't chewed on it enough. You have not stared at that thing enough in your personal life to where it has affected your heart, to where it has affected your gut, your spirit, man. Amen. And so what happens is you're still believing the enemy report and it, the Bible says it shall be done for you as you have believed. That's Matthew 8, 13, okay? And so for some of you guys, it's gonna take a little bit of work. You have put your belief in the wrong belief systems. You have put your belief in the enemy report and the world report, and you are reaping what you have sown. Your thoughts are seeds, ladies and gents, amen? Your thoughts are seeds. And so so many of you guys have planted wrong seeds for so long that you now have some weeds springing up in your personal life. Amen. Because you have planted some wrong seeds. And some of you guys, you didn't plant the seeds initially. The devil was the one that put those thoughts in your mind. But you allowed them to grow. You didn't catch them. You didn't take every thought captive and make it obedient unto Christ instantly. So therefore, that thing started to develop roots in your life. And now you're staring at a big old ugly weed. And how many of you guys know that it's a lot easier to pluck up a weed when it doesn't have a big root system than when you refuse to deal with it for a long season of your life. Amen. You can still pluck it up, but you've got to get in there and dig through some of that deep stuff and replace it with the right report. And it may take you a little bit longer. I'm not speaking that over you, but I am to say that if you have been thinking on the wrong things for long enough in your personal life, and if that stuff has been allowed to germinate, amen, it may take a little bit more time to decree the word of truth over your situation, to pluck up those wrong beliefs, and to change your life, ladies and gents. It shall be done for you as you have believed. You've got to fix these wilderness mindsets. They can hold you back in every single area of your personal life. Let's keep going. You guys hanging with me? I know it's been a hot minute. I got two more scriptures, and then we'll be done, okay? 
All righty. This is Mark 424. I absolutely love this scripture. I've always loved this scripture. It says, the measure of thought and study that you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. Wow. So think about it. You know, if you were to take a really um, strong antibiotic or a really strong pill, you know, because you're taking more of it, more of it's going to come back to you. Amen, right? Well, it says the measure of thought and study, the measure to which you are thinking about this on a regular basis, digesting this on a regular basis, is the measure that's gonna come back to you, is the measure of success that's gonna come back to you, is the measure of wisdom that's gonna come back to you in your personal life, is the measure of making your way prosperous. Remember that scripture we just talked about? Is the measure that you're gonna see come back to you in your life. Some of you guys, the problem is you've been giving yourself almost zero measures of this word on a regular Regular basis. I know you're a Christian. I know you believe in God. Some of you guys are even pretty faithful about church, but you have not been giving yourself a regular measure of this book. Amen. And what this scripture is saying is the measure, the personal amount of time that you are investing in the word of God to the truth that you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. Amen. You're planting seeds, ladies and gents. So if you spend a good deal of time in your life planting the seed of this book, in your mind and applying it in your personal life, you're gonna get a good measure in return. But if you're spending hardly any of your time in this book with the measure of what God is trying to dispatch to you, you're not gonna see a big return in your life. Pretty simple, you reap what you sow, ladies and gents. Amen. Okay, let's end with one of my favorite verses. Um, and I wanted this to be the last one because I want you guys to think about this one, okay? Because I think this is really critical. This is Proverbs 23, 7. It says, for as he, a person, thinks in his heart, so is he. Now, I want to really process that one with you guys a little bit as we're about to hop off here. For as he, a person, thinks in his heart, so is he. In other words, as he thinks, your mindset, right? Your mind's what you're thinking on. But notice it doesn't say as he thinks in his head. Amen? It says as he thinks in his heart. All right, what does your heart symbolize? It represents your spirit man a lot of the time, right? Um, and so as you're thinking in your heart, in other words, as you believe, I want you guys to think about it that way, as you believe. Some of you guys know the truth, but you don't believe the truth because everything in the natural, everything in your circumstances looks so opposite to what the word of God has to say. And you've been spending more time focusing on the natural report than the God report, amen? But this scripture says, but as a person thinks in their heart, so is he. Amen. In other words, you will be what you believe. It goes back to that other scripture that we were talking about as well. And so how do we change our beliefs? How do we change years of wrong alignment in our thought processes? How do we change years of, you know, just kind of being off course in our lives and not renewing our minds? Well, the way that we do it is digging into the word on a regular basis. It's by taking every thought captive. It's by making it obedient to Christ, starting different habits in our personal lives, starting different behaviors where we're chewing on that medicine of the word of God on a regular basis, where we're casting down wrong thoughts from the devil. And when we do this, it's going to bring prosperity and victory into these different areas of our lives. Amen. And we will become literally a different person. Remember that very first scripture I read you guys be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As your mind is renewed, you yourself will be renewed in every area of your life, ladies and gents. And so I want to encourage you guys today, renew your minds. Amen. That very first phrase that I said to you guys at the very beginning of the life was you will never grow past your mindset. And it's true. Some of you guys have been believing God for big victory, for big blessings in different areas of your life. And it has been your mindset that has been holding you back from being able to step into a place of victory. So I want to encourage you guys today. Think about what you're thinking about. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. It was so good to see you guys. And I'll chat with you again soon.